In this video, we're going to talk about the York heat pump lineup in 2024. We're going to talk about the side discharge systems, single stage systems, two stage systems, inverter systems. We're going to go through all of them. We're going to explain the difference and what you should consider when you're picking out the best system for your home. If you're considering a York product or model number, we're going to go through all the models, what they mean, and what is going to work best for your climate and your needs. Because for example, not all of these systems are a good option depending on whether or not you live in a cold climate or a hot climate. And we're going to help you pick out the best one for your specific climate and more on that in a second. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And it takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and your support is much appreciated. And just a simple like or a subscribe if you find this content helpful is much appreciated. That being said, if you don't like it, you can throw a thumbs down as well. Not a problem. I won't take it personal, but let's just dive in and kind of talk about the different product lines that York offers and what we're looking at here. Now, I have all the different product lines pulled up. This is York's site. This is really easy to find. It's, you know, york.com and it links to all their heat pumps. But there's a few different product lines. Now, you can see this 15.2 seer, one and two stage. That's just a basic single stage or two stage heat pump. You have another single stage heat pump. This is basic 14 seer. You have their 18 seer HMH7. This is a side discharge heat pump. We're going to talk about where those come in handy and what's the purpose of those types of systems. They have a 20 seer, which is their variable capacity communicating heat pump. They also have their SEER 2 system, but basically this is a SEER 2 single stage, so this is probably the newer model. They're probably phasing this one out because this looks like a single SEER system. And then same thing here. These are some of these uh, look like SEER 1 systems, so they're probably starting to phase those out with the SEER 2. So if you were choosing between some of these SEER 2 systems, so things like these side discharge heat pump like this HH8, if we look at the Energy Star data, let's first talk about some of the rebates that qualify for these, you know, and what products qualify in what regions. Now, when it comes to the tax credit or the heat pump tax credit that's available in the market today, there's a couple things to consider. Now, it's it's $2,000. If you're not familiar with that, that's up to 30% of the project cost. So basically, any heat pump, including installation cost, up to $7,000, you can write off $2,000 of that heat pump. So 30% of the project cost. And then there's cold climate heat pumps in these blue states. So that's places like Utah, Colorado, right? Anywhere that it's really cold. And then if you go to the south or the southern states like California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, everywhere where it's hot, those are going to have different rebate requirements. So where you see this little thing that says tax credit eligible and or cold climate, that means if you see cold climate, it qualifies for that cold climate rebate or at least some models in that series qualify for the cold climate heat, heat pump rebate and the our tax credit and the uh, the tax credit again is for going to be means that these warmer states these orange states uh, qualify and that's going to be because those are more cooling focused heat pumps. Now, if you're not even sure what a heat pump is, a heat pump is basically just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. So it's just a few extra components. They also have a defrost control board, which is something that happens when a heat pump gets too much frost on it in cold climate. It basically goes through into defrost mode and it defrosts and melts off any ice or frost that built up on the condenser outside. That's called defrost mode. And the defrost control board and the reversing valve are part of what help that system melt off that ice and defrost. So if you look at this York, these LX, the if you look at this LX series, uh, the HMH7 or this York Affinity system, let's refresh because this little thing's popping up and it's kind of annoying. Um, but that is all these systems. When you're looking at the specific data, they actually all. Let's see. You can see they all have cold climate eligible systems. So some of them, as you can see on the side discharge system, that's this guy right here, the uh, HMH7 or similar to the HH8. Um, it shows that this system qualifies, but it's going to be on the smaller tonnages. So it looks like up to three tons. And then you can see the SEER data right here is 15 and a half to 18.5, 10 to 9.5 on EER2. What does that mean? Don't worry, we'll explain it. And HSPF2, again, what does that mean? A lot of uh, HSPF and EERs and SEERs and twos and ones. So we'll break it all down, but SEER is an stands for seasonal energy efficiency ratio. This number is going to be most important in a cooling oriented climate like Phoenix, right? High sear means high performance in cooling. Now I'm oversimplifying, but in layman's terms, that's kind of what that means. EER is, in my opinion, is irrelevant for most systems that are inverters. Now it is not irrelevant in a single stage system um, because that's kind of how systems run when they're running at, at max capacity. But in a inverter system, it's the benefit of having an inverter or a variable speed system. So when we look at some of these systems here, 
and you look at what's the difference between this single stage, two stage, um, or you know this inverter product right here. The difference is that this system comes on at either 50% capacity or 100% capacity, and that capacity will actually vary based on the manufacturer. So it could be 70% with one, or it could be 40% with another. It just depends how the, the system is staged and set up, and it will vary by tonnage too, or it can, based on the manufacturer. Whereas a variable speed system will actually use an inverter to ramp up the compressor in multiple stages. It could be hundreds of stages where it's ramping up in one or two percent intervals all the way from 10 percent or 20 percent capacity up to its maximum 100 percent capacity and the reason that that's relevant is that an inverter is always going to be number one your most efficient system and number two your quietest system now one thing i like about side discharge options like this side discharge system here is that these systems are they're inverters they're super quiet but they're also tend to be a better bang for your buck in terms of the price point when compared to some of the higher end 20 sear systems like this 20 sear variable speed system which also has a variable speed compressor but this system will typically as you can see it's a bigger system they just cost more to manufacture and so they actually tend to be a little bit more expensive compared to the side discharge units that are smaller they have a lower shipping cost lower manufacturing cost and so it's a way to get a nice in between system that's a step up from a basic single stage or two stage system and a lot of times the price point on these side discharge systems is almost the same as a two stage product so a lot of times our customers are opting for these side discharge systems provided that it works well in your climate now in a cold climate like I mentioned these systems are are going to tend to perform better that's not always the case it depends if the system set up that way again or designed that way because for example the Daikin fit heat pump does not actually do well in cold weather but the Daikin fit enhanced which is a, a version that they made specifically for cold climates does do well in cold weather and the same is true for the train xv19 right the train xv19 i'll pull these up just so you can see what these look like these both do well in cold weather and um okay that's the manual but and so this is another side discharge system um, but the train xv19 doesn't do as well in cold weather as its counterpart the train resolute which looks very similar but it's just the cold climate version and i don't want to talk about train products in, in this video because we're talking like i said about the york series but the basic system breakdown right the benefit of these higher end systems is going to be when you number one they're going to be quieter number two they're going to be more efficient and then the reason to jump to let's say a 20 seat product is going from one of these side discharge systems is if you live in a climate where you're not as concerned about heating and how it performs in heating mode dependent on like I said the COP data is going to vary from system to system but if you're in a, a cooling oriented climate and you really want to maximize that efficiency rating um, in those cold climates because if you look at the HSPF2 ratings between these two systems you can actually see that the HSPF2 rating is 8.1 to 8.7 on this York system but it's 7.8 to 9.0 on the affinity series which is that 20 seer we just looked at and so it's actually pretty neck and neck so that 20 seer might like i said for this particular product line might actually be okay in a colder climate but the bottom line is that this system is going to be something that's very quiet very uh, economical to run but it's gonna be a higher price point obviously when you go to buy it because it's more advanced technology but if you're going to be in the home for a while you're definitely going to see that you know it's you're going to save that money in the long run run in terms of energy efficiency and keeping your bill lower. Now there's a couple other things I want to touch on briefly, but before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm if you're enjoying this content so far, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Again, it's a great way you can support the channel if you're finding this content helpful. And the last couple things I want to talk about is number one, the outdoor unit is actually only part of what makes up your air conditioning system. A lot of people, I know I was this way before I actually got into the HVAC trade and started to understand how things work. You know, I thought the magic box on the wall, the uh, thermostat, just I pushed that button and then somehow air came through my ducts. And I didn't realize that there was more to my air conditioner than just a box that sits outside. You actually have an air handler that sits inside. In your air handler unit, let's see if we can get some pictures of um, one of the air handlers here. There we go. So this is a furnace, but your air handler or your indoor component is actually the second part of what makes up the efficiency equation for your system. And how you pair that system with an indoor air handler that's just like a basic multi-stage system or multi-speed blower, or if you pair it with a communicating inverter variable speed system, or you're going to have a variable speed blower motor and an EXV or an electronic expansion valve, and I'll explain what that is in a second. That's where a lot of this added efficiency comes in. And one of the things that I like about these 
these communicating systems is that you get an electronic expansion valve, which what that does is that's an indoor metering device that controls the flow of refrigerant that is going to your indoor coil. Your indoor coil is the A-frame that sits on top of your furnace or sits inside of your air handler, if you have an air handler. And that metering device, the electronic expansion valve, opens and closes ever so slightly based on an electronic signal coming from the condenser or the thermostat or a combination of both, depending on you know which model. This varies across manufacturers. And what it does is it's pinpointing the precise amount of refrigerant that should be entering the coil. And what this does is this, number one, maximizes efficiency. Two, it maximizes comfort. And so the system is much more effective at removing heat or heating. And number three is it also makes the system, when the system is running, it makes it quieter. And that's another just, again, comfort factor to consider. And it's just a better operating system. It's more efficient. It doesn't, a traditional system uses a thermostatic expansion valve, which think of an EXV as like a digital version and a TXV is like an analog version. TXVs are, you know, they work, but they're not just because it's analog and basic and simple doesn't mean it's without its problems. If you want the most inefficient, basic, simple system, you could put in a, just a basic piston restrictor, but most systems require a TXV nowadays where they ship with one stock in the coil. A lot of them do. That's not true for all of them. You can still get some basic systems with a fixed metering device, but the bottom line is that that's something I really like on these inverter systems because they make the system just all around more comfortable, quieter, and better at doing its job, which is keeping you comfortable and keeping your home at its set point and saving you money on your energy bills. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. So we hope you found this content on the York product lineup helpful. And if you have any questions, again, post those in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. And let us know what project you're currently working on. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that talk about some of the efficiency ratings we talked about in this video, as well as a few other videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.